I'm Daryl Goodman, the director for Achieve One at Achieve It Solutions. Today we're going to be going through our 3PL or third party management module. This is one of the modules in the Achieve One suite. This product originated as an easy way for people to be able to create the integrations needed to take transactions between SAP Business One and external or third party warehouses. However, the tool has been implemented successfully for other applications, such as a point of sale integration, as well as the uh, integrations between other data uh, consumption and data importing tools. As we look at a 3PL configuration screen, you'll notice that we have a third party name and third party code. This allows us to create many third party configurations so that if we're working with multiple 3PLs, we'll have the ability to integrate with each of them despite them each potentially having unique configurations. We have the ability if desired to link a 3PL to the warehouse code as well as being able to have some additional general features such as uh, creating a new ship to address if the record uh, coming in from the 3PL does not already exist, creating an invoice based off of a delivery so that if we import a delivery from our 3PL, we can have both the delivery and the invoice created automatically, as well as functions such as closing the sales order after delivery for those that do not allow partial shipments. As you'll notice, we have the ability to communicate with our third parties via FTP. So the built-in FTP allows us to create a inbound and outbound path, as well as being able to store the credentials and login information for each FTP site which again can be unique on a third party basis. Additionally, we'll be exporting files that will be used to uh, send to the 3PL and importing files that will be used from the 3PL. In order to be able to export that, we can define the path. And as you can see, we have the ability to export sales orders, purchase orders, business partner master data, such as customers, vendors, and leads, as well as item master data. On the importing side, we can import sales orders, deliveries, air invoices, goods or CPOs, as well as inventory goods receipts and inventory goods issues. Finally, we have notification. This allows us to be notified as to what's happening. So if there is an error, we can notify an error both on inbound and outbound transactions, which can either be the user that's running the program or a dedicated user, which can be notified by internal SAP notifications and our messages or via typical email. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of different uh, configurations. A simple configuration here is just exporting a sales order to be shipped by a third party. As you can see here, the benefit of this is it allows us to be able to define transactions via XML with XML tags that do not match the SAP field names. So for example, you can see where SAP refers to the document number as docnum, the third party refers to it as SO number. Same thing with card code and cust number. This allows us to ensure that we are able to send the data to the 3PL in a way that they can consume it. Additionally, we have the ability to do functions such as just using a drop-down box to select the field that we would like to export with pre-built logic to link us to headers, lines, customers, customer addresses, as well as freight information such as packaging. We can also write SQL formulas to be able to export data, which can be based off of a keyed object or just a standalone SQL function, as well as static values as required. This gives us flexibility in defining the data so that we can take the data from SAP Business One as it is, or if required, transform the data in order to be used by a 3PL if they require their own codes. The loop start and loop end function gives us the ability to define, sort of like the parentheses in an Excel formula, where documents begin and end, as well as where rows begin and end. And if we were sending additional information, such as packaging information or bin information, we could have additional loops, essentially each opening as an acting as an open parenthesis. You'll notice that we have the ability to define export times so that you can have this function in a real-time basis, or if you choose to bundle your uh, documents together and send them in a batch, you can choose one or more uh, export times so that you can control the time of day that you communicate with your third-party basis. Again, this is unique to the individual uh, 3PL, so you can work differently with each of your 3PLs based on their requirements. Finally, you'll see that it generates a XML file, and the XML file here will be based off of your definition. To add a new record to the transaction, simply add a row and choose any field that you wish to include. So if I wish to include, for instance, a um, line base quantity, I have the ability to say and add this new value. If I no longer want the value, I can simply delete the row. So this is a very simple export, and what I'd like to do is to compare it to the import. 
So as we mentioned, when this product originated, it was to be able to communicate with 3PLs. So we would send them simple information about their sales order that excluded information such as pricing and other sensitive information that we did not want them to have. However, when we do the import, you'll notice that we require only minimal information to be able to create a delivery. So in this case, when I import a delivery transaction, I'm only asking for the original sales order number, the original line number from the sales order, the item code for verification purposes, and a quantity. Since we have the ability to link it to the original sales order, which is already inside of SAP, the base information, such as who the customer is, what ship to address it is, any tax codes, pricing, or other information, including discounts, would automatically be copied from the base document to the target by standard SAP functionality and is not required for the data integration to be able to create the transaction. Let's take a look at this. If we go into our 3PL export functionality, You'll notice here that I can come in here and select for a particular warehouse and see all of the sales orders that are pending to be exported. Let's take a look at our last document, sales order number 444, and we can see here that this is for Port Jefferson Construction, where they're going to be buying three line items, and they have different pricing. Additionally, if you look in the UDFs, you'll notice that we have in here fields that identify whether or not the 3PL has been sent yet, as well as what time and date that it has been sent. This gives us the ability to keep track of when the documents were sent. Note that as we process this, we can process it manually as we're showing here, or we can have it be an automated process where a processor runs in the background and exports the files and imports the files as required. I'm going to simply highlight the row. Again, I could have selected all or individual rows. And I'm going to choose Export Selected. I get the message telling me this was successful. And if I go to my export path, I can see here that the document that I just exported was in fact successfully created so that I can see my document as well as the three line items that I want to be able to send to my 3PL so they can deliver it to my customer. Note that had there been an error, we would have gotten a notification. When the 3PL picks up the document, they optionally can move it to an archive or to an error folder. We'll go more into that as we do the import. The 3PL would have now gone through and done their pick pack process and shipped that um, document. And I want to import that in order as a delivery in order to close the sales order. So having the FTP already picked it up, I would have moved it and I've got my delivery file that's being created here for um, document number 444. As you can see, it's very similar to the file that I exported. So I'm only asking them to return what I've given them. But it now says deliveries instead of sales orders. When it comes time to import the document, you'll see that it reads through all of the files that have come in. Additionally, those options that I discussed, such as closing the sales orders or creating the invoice, appear here based on their defaults and allow me to change the functionality on each import if required. A drill down arrow allows me to drill in and see the XML file as received. And again, I would simply select all and choose import selected. Other configurations that you could do, such as the uh, importing of a more complex document would allow me to be able to import a sales order. So in the example of an integration with the point of sale system, I have the ability, as seen here, to take data that's being sent to me in data that is in, in XML tags that are not unique um, or in any way configured to SAP and be able to translate them to SAP. Similarly to the export, as you can see here, I have the ability to define the XML tag, select many fields, including line and header fields, and be able to identify where I'd like them to uh, map to. So you can see here for QTY, I was able to point to the line text for quantity. Additionally, I can use SQL functions to transform data that was given to me so that if I have something like a shipping code, that does not match between the 3PL and my setup. I also have SQL functions that allow me to take data, such as when I have a shipping code coming back from a 3PL that doesn't match the requirements in SAP. I can take that, write a case statement, and be able to take the data and manipulate it into what's required for SAP to be able to import the file. Additionally, we have a log that will show me the files that were imported. So you can see here that I have the ability to see the transactions that were created.